and welcome back. So in this video, I'm going to show you all around the develop module of Lightroom. Let's get started. So I'm going to do this uh, top to bottom and from the right side to the left side. So this is a completely unretouched photo straight from the camera. I had a soft box on the left here lighting the bride and it turned out pretty good. It's a pretty good picture. So you see here's the histogram. Now if you don't know anything about a histogram, uh, it's kind of a good idea to look it up. And I'm not saying that sarcastically, uh, it kind of is. Um, it's not something you need to know. It is useful though for when you're going for perfection. Um, so if you're a perfectionist, kind of Google the, the histogram. Uh, I'll give you a quick rundown right now. So essentially what this is, is a map of uh, total blackness to total whiteness. So over here we have our blacks, then uh, you'll notice that Lightroom kind of tells us this next uh, cluster is our shadows, then we have our exposure, which is kind of like the midtones, um, the highlights, and the whites. So if you look down here, you have sliders that can adjust all of these uh, values. So that's the um, histogram in a nutshell. It kind of shows you, it's like a, a visual representation of how much light there is in the photo, essentially. Uh, so moving on, we have your local adjustment tools. This is a crop tool, very simple. You have your spot removal tool, which I used very briefly earlier, classic red eye removal. Um, this is a graduated filter. This is a radial filter, and this is your um, local adjustment brush. So with this, um, you have so many different settings here that you can change. Um, it really opens up a huge amount of possibilities. Um, so that is that. Let me just give you a quick demonstration here of what the local brush, adjustment brush can do. Um, so we have an exposure value of 0.5, meaning half a stop. Um, if you don't know what a stop is, you should find out. So I like to always kind of fill in a little bit of shadow on the, on the darker side of the face. So what I'll do here is take this uh, 0.5 exposure adjustment and just kind of trace the shadow side of the face. Now it's a very subtle change. Um, here's the difference. Here's what it was before and here's what it is now. So decent change, kind of uh, for ladies, it's always good to have them in a lot of light. Um, you don't want too much contrast on their face. It's not very flattering for men. Yeah. Uh, for ladies, the rule of thumb is to kind of give them more light, kind of broad light them more. So that's what the adjustment brush does. Um, and moving on to the basic tab here, uh, we have color and we have black and white. If you want to do black and white, you just hit the V key on the keyboard, um, or you can literally click black and white, back to color. Um, we have our white balance, so my white balance is on auto pretty much all the time, unless I'm kind of being creative or the lighting is really whacked out. Uh, so you can change the lighting after, or excuse me, the white balance after the fact, which is pretty cool. Um, and all you're essentially doing is moving the color temperature. So if I want this cooler, we go down to blue, which is to the left, and it's a lower value on the Kelvin scale. So we'll do, say, 4,000, and that makes it much bluer. Um, and you just saw it was on 6,500, and that's much warmer or more orange. So uh, they also have a tint slider here. Um, what that does is kind of tints the image either magenta or green. Um, I, I generally stay away from that or maybe kind of balance it out at zero, um, but it always it has a very strong effect, even just going up one or two uh, points. So we'll put it back to, to where it was. Um, I generally don't touch the, the tint scale. Uh, moving on to exposure. Exposure is something I'm always keeping an eye out for. Um, whoops. Um, exposure is probably one of the most important sliders you have in Lightroom in the develop module. Um, it allows you to change the overall brightness um, of most of the tones in the image. Um, so if we move this up 0.1 of a stop, or a tenth of a stop, two tenths of a stop, three tenths, 
the whole image gets brighter, not just you know certain areas. The whole image does. So that's what that does. It allows you to move all your values, your shadows, your highlights, your whites, your blacks, and the midtones all up at once. Um, the contrast essentially increases the difference between white and black. So if you jack up your contrast, these darks will be much darker and these highlights on our forehead will be much brighter. So um, that gives it a certain look. Um, I like a lower contrast so you can see all the detail in people's faces and clothing and everything. It just kind of brings out the details to have lower contrast. Um, highlights are this part of the graph. So if you notice I move this, so does that graph. Now highlights are, if we zoom into our image here, highlights are the, the kind of the whiter of the whites um, in your image. So if I jacked up the highlights, you'll see that the, this forehead patch, uh, this highlight here in her forehead kind of becomes almost all white. If I go back down to zero, then you start to see the skin and more details. Um, if I go down to negative 100, then that almost disappears and you'll start to see just more skin. It'll be more of a matte look instead of like a glossy look. So that's what that does. Uh, shadows, kind of the complete opposite. You'll see in here, this is a shadow, this is a shadow, basically anything that is um, between or on the other end of an object and a light source is a shadow. So her nose here is casting a shadow on her head. So if we raise the shadow values, to say 50, that particular area of the image is going to get lighter. And if you darken it by going minus 50, it'll get darker. Now the whites are just the extremes of the image. So, you know, um, whoops, if we if we jack up the whites, you can kind of get an idea. I'll, I'll just kind of zoom out so you can see that. Go back, go back to normal. So we have 100, 100 whites. That kind of just blows out the image more or less. If we bring them down, brings out all the detail and all the whites. Just basically um, anything that looked white before will start to kind of bring back some more detail. Blacks, same thing. So over here, this is almost complete darkness. If we jack this up to 100, then we can almost see that chair. Really powerful stuff here. Um, clarity is kind of, uh, I like to consider it like the midtones, uh, contrasting of the midtones. So um, it just kind of essentially gives it a gritty look. So if I jack this up to 50, you know, you see kind of she, her hair, you know, all the detail in her hair has just really enhanced her dress. However, uh, all it's doing is essentially doing contrast in this part, this part of the histogram, all it's doing. So if we go back down to zero, notice the, 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 um, this middle part of the histogram changes a little bit. So I'll go back, do that again. You can kind of see, see these values are being more uh, contrasted when we up the clarity. So that's back down to zero. Clarity is something I like to do for like the groom's portrait. Um, if he has a little bit of stubble, um, that'll enhance that. Um, any sort of detail shots, sometimes clarity can be good. I like to kind of paint it on more than give it a, in like a, a macro adjustment. Um, that's just me though. Um, feel free to play around. Um, I'm just kind of giving you an idea of what all these sliders do. So if we if we go down, then it gives it a much softer look, almost like a glow. Um, so it's a very powerful tool, the clarity. Um, use at your discretion. Vibrance is kind of like smart saturation. So vibrance takes into account the skin tones. Um, and this particular lady's skin is um, almost perfect. Um, so if we jack up the vibrance to say 25, then you notice kind of the yellows around here, um, the colors in the flowers have kind of risen, but her skin tone more or less stayed the same. Versus if we jack up the saturation to 25, her skin tones much, much more orange. So um, I like to use saturation maybe more for landscape shots. Um, you know, it's just not something that I like to use a lot. Um, the color, I like bold colors, but I like that to be enhanced by the light more so than the settings on my computer after the fact. Um, that's just me, again. So the tone curve here is not something a lot of people are familiar with. The tone curve, uh, more or less, is a histogram 
for your contrast in a way. But if you if you start to add points here, you just click and drag, you start to see the changes in your image. And if you play around with this long enough, you'll, you'll understand what patterns, uh, what different patterns produce. So like an S-curve creates more contrast. They also have uh, presets here. So point curve, custom, there's all these different presets here that you can do. So if I want a strong contrast, then you'll see uh, well, it's not that strong, but, um, but you see it's kind of more of an S shape. So you start to kind of see uh, in a different way what different tone curves, different shapes, and how they affect your image. The next tab is your HSL Color BMW tab, which uh, hue, saturation, luminance, color, black and white. So I use this usually only for the color part. Um, I just, I like, it's just a, a better way to that, I don't know, my brain just likes it better. What can I say? Um, I really never play around with the HSL or the BMW uh, sections. I just go with the color. And so the color allows me these HSL adjustments within each color. So for example, this happens a lot. When someone's skin is too orange, like you've jacked up, you want the, the colors in the room to show up, but you don't want their skin to, to increase in, in saturation, like too orange, and what you do is you just select this orange and you go, you take, take down the saturation. And you'll notice that the only thing in this photo that changes is the color of her skin, which is fantastic. So I do that to rescue uh, skin tones all the time. Um, you can either change the luminance, make it a little bit brighter if you want. Um, you know, you can really get kind of crazy with it. Um, and there's a lot of just bizarre things that you can do um, if you let your settings get out of control. So, um, you know, and you can do the same thing with any other colors. Um, a lot of people uh, know that when they do HDR effects or you know bringing out all the details in, a, in an image, they're going to get a lot of blues for some reason, and a lot of their whites turn blue. Um, you can solve that problem by just reducing the blue in your you know the saturation of the blue in your image, right? Going right here. It's very very simple. In fact, I can kind of show you if uh, there's an HDR setting right here and it'll change you see our veil turned blue there so what you can do is go in over into the blue and you can just say minus 50 saturation and that whole uh veil just got way less blue so I'll, I'll show you the difference if you see that really quick back to blue yep and then if you just minus 50 on the saturation boom it's it's perfectly fixed i mean obviously you wouldn't want to make this image look like this because it's ridiculous but um, you can fix it somewhat uh, if you're having blue issues on your whites when you do HDR. So that's the uh, color tab. Down to split toning. Split toning is really cool. Um, you can kind of have cool effects like uh, you know make making your highlights a specific color and your shadows a specific color and upping and downing the saturation of that color within the tone that you're um, changing the color of. So it's pretty cool, very precise. Um, again, it's not something I play around with too much. I have presets over here, which I'll show you later, that take care of that for me. Um, detail. Detail. I've heard uh, multiple things about uh, Lightroom's detail. Um, a lot of people say that the, the sharpening um, just isn't very high quality. So if I'm doing an individual edit or something that really is important to me, I'll just totally turn down the sharpening for Lightroom, and I'll do all my sharpening in Photoshop. Um, there's a lot of things in here that you can mess around with noise reduction, um, but uh, if you're lighting your photos well, you're not gonna need to do a lot of noise reduction. So um, that's the detail tab. Over to lens corrections. Lens corrections is a great thing. Um, this is a, you can tell the, uh, what is this? 85 millimeter lens, uh, 1.2. This is my Canon 85 millimeter. If you just hit enable profile corrections, it knows which lens you used and it'll uh, make adjustments based on the lens's kind of faults. So for example, it knows to lighten up the corners and also um, remove a little bit of the distortion in the, in, the, in the edges. So I'll click off again, look at the corners. They go dark and kind of distort a little bit and I'll turn it back on and they lighten up. It's nothing huge, 
um, but it can make a difference in certain cases if there's a face on the corner of one of your images or or something you know just kind of remove that distortion uh, chromatic aberration is something that occurs when there's uh, heavy backlighting or a huge contrast in your light and your darks um, it will kind of creep up as a form of like a purple edge um, I've also seen it green sometimes so this allows it to remove it a little bit um, and then you can kind of go into here in the color um, and kind of play around with it even more so it'll, you can extremely remove that purple um, I usually have to do this when I'm backlighting from the Sun uh, so that's that this is interesting the um, I don't even know what to call this but it's the uh, it's like the leveler basically um, so right now it's off but if I turn it to auto it'll kind of analyze the image and make it upright it'll analyze the lines in the image and make it what it thinks is its best version of standing up it doesn't always get it right but most of the time it does and auto usually works so you know I had an image that was kind of crooked I turned it on auto and boom it's straight as can be so that's a really nice feature um, you can also do it yourself by manual uh, there's a little rotate button here if you just arrow up and down on the keys you'll slowly start to see it kind of turn and you can kind of fine-tune from there um, one thing I will say is that if you rotate too much like I'll rotate five you'll you'll lose your canvas here uh, your canvas will be exposed so you need to uh, scale up and you can just do that by kind of arrowing up as well and before you know it you know you'll you'll trim off those edges you can also crop too that's another option uh, just something to be uh, aware of effects I never go in here because uh, Photoshop's frankly way better um, camera calibration again never go in here either um, it's not something I've ever changed since I owned Lightroom um, it's never not something I ever feel like I need to change so I just kinda leave it alone the reset I use quite often um, just to kinda get a photo back to, to where it is um, another great button to know is uh, or shortcut is command um, apostrophe and what that does is, or control apostrophe, what that does is it creates uh, like a virtual copy of the photo you're looking at. So it essentially is the exact same image. And if you had done any edits to this image, those edits would follow as well. So it allows you to kind of compare two images. So after hitting command apostrophe, you have your two files. Let's say that you want this file to look like this preset, and you want this file to look like this preset. Um, so you have two completely different edits of the same photo if you want to compare those side by side You're just not sure which one to choose for the final edit you hit uh, you select both of them um, So I'm gonna shift over and you hit C and that's I guess compare and it sh uh, shows two of them side by side nope. Yeah, it was just loading see Lightroom can sometimes be pretty slow. So uh, here we go and this allows you to kind of just quickly, you know, pick between the two which one you like. I personally like the black and white better, but I think they're both not the best. Anyway, um, so that's just a nice shortcut. So over here we have our presets window or tab. Now, when you first uh, get Lightroom, you probably won't have all these um, all these presets that I have right here open. Um, you'll probably see something more like this, like Lightroom video presets, effects, color presets, all this stuff. You'll probably see basically just this um, and, and not much else. I got uh, a preset pack. It's the, um, the SLR Lounge presets. Um, I think it's the two, 2016 version. Um, they're really good. They're really great. They kind of give you a huge, broad um, range of edits. Already, already done for you. So this one kind of emulates film a little bit. Um, this one is a is a interesting black and white. Um, and then you have the kind of your your more uh, local adjustments. Um, so you can soften the photo. If I soften this, it'll probably basically reduce the qu the clarity. And all these presets are essentially just moving the sliders over here in your uh, basic and tone curve columns or tabs. So uh, you'll have different. Um, value show up that you you know like this one just lowered the contrast but all I did was hit a button over here so you'll see your sliders move when you hit presets over here so the SLR SLR lounge presets are something I highly recommend um, they're the the foundation that I use to build my own presets um, which I'll explain in a second 
So there's, there's tons of variations of their filters and adjustments in here. Um, here is split toning, like I was saying earlier. Here's the split toning uh, screen right over here. You can change your highlights to whatever color you want. You can change your shadows to whatever color you want, and you can up the saturation of each of those adjustments. Over here, you have uh, combos. So these are already done for me. Like instead of having to select my blue and then select my orange, I can go over here and do blue orange, and boom, it just immediately changes. And now you notice these values have changed as well. So it's a preset that SLR Lounge has put together for me that I purchased, and I think it was $150 for all these presets. And now it enables me to edit 50 times faster without making all these tiny little adjustments or figuring out myself. It's really something handy, and it's not something you should be ashamed of. Or you know, editing with filters is, you know, filters is kind of the dumbed down way of saying um, adjustments. So. Or, you know, so don't be ashamed of having filters and using them in your editing. If you're a professional, it doesn't matter, you know, whatever makes your image look the best. So I like blue and violet a lot sometimes, um, and or even blue, blue, if, you're, if your images are too warm. I, I find a lot that I just like a much cooler image. So I do blue, blue a lot. Um, and that's plain. So uh, I don't know what this was before. It was probably that. I don't know. Anyway, um, so the SLR lounge features or filters are incredible. I highly recommend them. I'll leave a link um, at the bottom of this page so that you can you can look at those and decide if you want to purchase those. They're really great. Um, here you can do like a vignette. It's it's all very very awesome. Um, down here, I actually purchased a Visco Film um, filter pack. And I'm not too pleased with it. Uh, it's very, like, just kind of, there's way too many, you know, little things. And I don't, like, they're all names of film. And I don't know the names of these films. It's not very intuitive, I guess is what I'm saying. Visco Film makes an incredible app for the iPhone and uh, iPad. And I edit a lot of my, you know, snapshots with Visco Film. And it looks, it makes it look fantastic. The films are, are named much more intuitively. Um, it allows you to preview them much better. And this, this, this little pack of film that I got was 59 bucks. And I, I probably will never use it just because of how unuser friendly it is. Um, and then you'll come down here finally to user presets. User presets are something that you build yourself. Um, I built this preset. Uh, they're basically just settings um, that you really like and that you want to apply to future images. So the way to do that, or the way to make your own user preset, or say you know, like say say that you um, you discovered, oh, I really like when the clarity is down to 99. Um, you know, no one would ever say that because that looks ridiculous. However, if that's really something that you like, um, what you can do is go to up here under presets you hit the plus button preset name user presets so you just name it you know whatever test and you can select all the different things within the the things that you changed if you don't want to include split toning in this preset uh, then you don't have to you just uncheck it um, so I'm and then you just hit create and it saves it down under your user presets so there it is whatever test so now to another image um, I just hit whatever test, and boom, there's the exactly the same settings as that other image onto this image. So really, really cool stuff. Um, that's about it for the develop module. Um, in the next video, I'm going to be giving you a demo of my exact workflow. I'll be going through it, I'll be explaining it and narrating it um, as best I can. It should give you a really good idea of how streamlined you can you can make your process. Um, I've been doing this for a lot of, a long time and I think I've kind of nailed it. I've gotten it down to a really, really quick and tight workflow. And I wanna share that with you because it's gonna save you a lot of time in the long run. So click over to the next lesson. I'll see you there.